This is Your Path with Bishop Mark from Dallas Universal Life Church in Dallas, Texas. Forget what you think you know about church. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you, will be, you may be also. And you know the way to this place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The true gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord, the word, the light. Okay, be seated, please. I say good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Again, a lively bunch. When I was close to 13 years old, I had a dream about heaven. I dreamed that it was this big hospital and as I walked down the halls, uh, all I saw was room after room of sick people lying in bed. There were some people who had IVs hooked up to them, and there were some who had casts on their legs or on their arm. And when I woke up, I was so disappointed. I had been told all of my young life how beautiful heaven was going to be and how perfect heaven was going to be. And yet, I couldn't shake the image out of my mind. I hadn't spent an enormous amount of time at hospitals. The worst was when I was 11 and in traction for a broken arm for three weeks. So. Now, to have a dream where heaven is nothing but a big, giant hospital was, well, such a letdown. Now, that has always stuck in the back of my mind because it seemed so real. And no matter what I read about heaven, the streets of gold, no sickness, no death, being reunited with loved ones, being with Jesus, those images of that dream haunted me. As I started studying about something we may not know about, heaven, 
I really got excited about the verses I found. And as I was studying this, I found a new anticipation for heaven. And when that happened, God really spoke to me about that dream that I had. It was simply this. Heaven is where all sickness and hurts, the people in the casts, will be healed. Makes sense. That is why we go to hospital, isn't it? To be healed. But I am not the only one who has had fears or wrong ideas about heaven. You're, you, hear a lot of, uh, you hear a lot of those ideas come to surface when there's a funeral or someone talking about the death of a loved one. So where do people get their misconceptions about heaven? The number one reason that we have a distorted view of heaven is because Satan likes to make sure we receive bad information. The good information we do receive about heaven, Satan tries to twist and manipulate it. Remember what Jesus said about the devil from John chapter 8, verse 44. You are, the, you are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own recourses, for he is a liar and the father of it. So when you hear something about heaven and it, it doesn't line up with scripture, in other words, scripture doesn't back that statement up, then you pretty much know who it's from. During the tribulation, the Antichrist will rise up, or the beast as the Bible calls him, and look what he attacks us with, his words. From Revelation chapter 13 verse 6, then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. Satan slanders three things. He's been doing this all through history. God's person, his name, God's place, his tabernacle, and, uh, and uh, those, in, uh, those who dwell in heaven, God's people. Now, Satan not only attacks us on a daily basis, but also our view of God and our view of heaven. From Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. What better place for Satan to attack than the place where God says to have our mind on? Satan knows that if he can get, to, get you to think less of God, to think less of heaven, you will focus more on the here and now instead of the hereafter. And if you are not excited about the prospect of heaven, then you are not going to witness to people so, they can, so that they can go to heaven. When you go somewhere and it was nice, say like a restaurant or a movie, you are more apt to pass that information on because you, went, you want others to experience what you experienced. However, when you go somewhere and it was a bad experience, you will pass, you will pass that information on too. Now, unfortunately, people are more apt to complain about a bad experience than to praise a good one. If Satan can get you to lower your opinion of heaven, others will notice, maybe through your attitude, your mannerisms, choices you make. So how should we feel about heaven? We have to go to the standard of promise of what God wants us to anticipate. From John chapter 14 verse 2 and 3, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you and if I go to prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am you may be also. Now I want you to think of this verse in these terms. A soon to be groom talking to his soon-to-be bride. If the bridegroom says to his soon-to-be wife, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may also be. How do you think she would respond? Not a single day would go by, not a single hour in which the bride wouldn't anticipate joining her husband in that place he prepared for her. Isn't that what most couples want when they get married, to be with one another, to live happily ever after? But I'm afraid that most Christians are not thinking in those terms. Satan has robbed them of that joy that comes with anticipating what it will be like to be with Jesus forever. Most people have the view that we will be uh, sitting on a cloud playing a harp. And no wonder people don't get excited about heaven. If you come to realize that you are going to be with the one who loves you the most, the one who has done the most for you, and that you get to spend eternity with him, how could you not be excited? Amen.
it is time for everybody's favorite part of the service. That's right, the announcements. Everybody's favorite part of the service, the announcements, of course. Let's go this, this right and quick here. And we'll have a quick round table afterwards, and then everybody can kind of relax for the rest of the day, okay? All right, here we go. Pray at DallasRealC.com. Pray at DallasRealC.com. Very simple. If you have a prayer request, you can submit it there through that email address, pray at DallasRealC.com. You, you can remain anonymous, or you can leave us your name. We do pray every day here at Dallas, Dallas Universal Life Church. So please, if you have a prayer request, just email us at pray at DallasRealC.com. Compliments, concerns, suggestions, or complaints. Compliments, concerns, suggestions, or complaints. If you have one of those, you're going to need one of these. It's another email address, folks. Here it is. Feedback at DallasRealC.com. Pretty self-explanatory there. Did you know we had two podcasts? Two. We have two. two podcasts. I can't believe it myself. As all of you know, we do have Your Path with Vision Mark. That's the, the, the uh, gospel and the sermon every week, uh, as long with any other special uh, services we have that, that's offered to you every week. Um, Your Path with Vision Mark. I encourage if you if you if you come to the service here, if you watch us on YouTube or anywhere else, I encourage you also to check out the podcast because I always find that I, I hear something different on the podcast. I don't know what it is, why it is, but for some reason on the podcast, I always catch something a little different, little little uh, variation of what I've what I've said, and it can be rather interesting. So you might ask, well, Bishop, how do I check out your podcast? Well, it's very simple. You go to your favorite browser and type in Your Path with Bishop Mark. It's going to take you to the podcast. You can also go to Alexa and say, Alexa, play Your Path, and she'll play Your, your Path with Bishop Mark. Or you can simply go to your, one of your favorite uh, podcast providers. We have several of them listed on the back of your program. And uh, search again for your path with Bishop Mark. Now, that's our one pro podcast. The newest podcast we have is Life Lessons with Bishop Mark. Now, that's very simple. It's exactly what it says, Life Lessons with Bishop Mark. These is what I call the TikTok of podcasts because it's only about three to five minutes long per episode. And it's exactly what it is, Life Lessons. Um, it's, it's good for those people who have a, a little shorter attention span. Um, so check out Life Lessons. It's our, our newer, our newer uh, uh, podcast here, and it's the same with kind of thing here. Just go to your favorite provider, your favorite search provider, type in Life Lessons with Mitchell Mark, or you can, of course, go to your favorite uh, podcast provider, like we said on the back of your program here, and again, type in Life Lessons with Mitchell Mark. Please check them out. Also, on the end of those podcasts, inside those podcasts, you'll see there's a place where you can talk to us. You can leave a message. You can say something. I know you're there. I can see you're, I can see you're watching. I can see your stats. But I just want to hear from you. Do you. What do you think of the podcast? Do you like it? Do you not like it? you want something different? Do you have questions? Please feel free to feedback there, okay? All right, moving on. You know, you can make a difference. We are a church of all volunteers. None of us here take a salary, not even myself. Um, the only way we make it is through our tithes from our, our congregation here and through uh, charitable donations from people out there in YouTube land and, and, and Podcastville. And we could always use your help. Uh, very simple. If you believe in what we're saying here, if you believe in this message of an all-inclusive, all-loving, all-forgiving God, one who takes care of everybody, all that he has created, please, continue, uh, please consider making a donation to Dallas Universal, Life, Dallas Universal Life Church. It's very simple. Just go to DallasVLC.com and click on the button for Donate. There you can make a tax-deductible donation to Dallas Universal Life Church, and we would appreciate it very much so. Now, I'll tell the time when I, I talk about the donations to the church I'm not very good at, but I do have to talk about it. I always get somebody that comes to me and says, Bishop, I, I love the church, I do, and I want to help out, but I don't have any money, I'm broke. And I look at him and say, well, you know what, I'm broke too. You can do exactly what I do, and do what all of us do here, we volunteer. Your time is worth money, um, and it's a good way to tithe and to, to pay back your church and your society and your community with your time. Uh, if you simply go to DallasVLC.com once again and click on the button for volunteer, there you'll see a list of the, the services, of the uh, positions we have available for volunteers. If you don't like something there, it's okay. Come on in, there's always something to do here at the church, there's never enough hours in the day, there's always something left undone. Please come in and volunteer. We could always use your help, okay? All right, just see me or call the office or send us an email. Come on in. I'll, trust me, I'll put you to work. All right. Again, this is coming up, folks. This is, uh, uh, guess what I just finished yesterday, by the way? The movie. I just finished our movie, Seven, okay. Rising from the Ashes. It premieres in only 21 days. 21 days, we have our seven-year anniversary. Um, on the 28th of, uh, of this month, 20th of May, at 3 p.m., our regular time on Sunday, we will celebrate our seventh year as a church. And that's amazing to me, and I appreciate all of you uh, for the, the past seven years, and I, I look forward to the next years to come. And I hope you can all join us on the, uh, the 28th here at church. We've got a busy, busy, busy end of the month and a busy, busy beginning of the month next month, so bear with us, okay? In only 21 days, we'll have the premiere of Seven Rising from the Ashes. Let me tell you something, folks. I watched it yesterday. It's finished. It's done. It's, there's nothing else that needs to be done on it, and I'm very, 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 very proud of it. I'm very happy with it, and I think y'all will be too. Y'all are all involved in it. 
Um, you all had your, your say in it, and I think it came out great. And the bloopers at the end, Don, are fantastic. That's all I'll say. I can't wait. I know you can't. Mm -mm. All right. Guess what's the weekend after that? The weekend after our anniversary is the 40th anniversary of Dallas Pride uh, down at Fair Park. Yeah, we are participating in that. We've, we are signed up. We are ready to go. We do still need your help for financing it. So please consider when you, when you come in to church next week and the week after, please make a donation into the second offering to help us get there and help us pay for our expenses. It's not cheap, folks. It's, it's really a strain on us, but it's important. I do feel like it's very, very important that we go and, and show our support and also be seen as, as, as people who are you know, affirming, who, who love everybody. Who, just like God loves us, we love everybody as well. And that's what we're trying to show here, okay? Dallas Pride is the 4th. We're doing the parade is on the 4th, uh, which is Sunday the 4th. That Sunday we'll have a, an early morning service. So please, folks, there will be a sleepover on the 3rd, okay, like we always do. There'll be a sleepover on the 3rd. We'll get up early Sunday morning. I know I'm always running late. We cannot run late that day because we did it last week, last year, and we almost missed, it, missed the uh, parade. So we'll have an early morning service. It'll be a quick service. Then we'll jump in the RV or jump on the train, whichever you all want to do, and we'll get down to Fair Park. We've got to be down there by, I believe, uh, noon. So it's going to be quick and moving, okay? Uh, the parade is on the 4th. It starts at 2 o'clock. It is televised. Uh, please tell your friends. If you haven't invited all your friends and all your family, please do so. We have room. We've got a lot of block walking room out there around the RV. And the more people, I think the more people can get out there, the more people that will see us. So please. And, and if, you, if you're bringing people, please let me know how many. I'm trying to order t-shirts right now. So I need to know exactly what we're doing here. And the t-shirts are not cheap, so I can't just order a whole bulk of them. Okay, so let me know how many you're bringing, how many people you're expecting, and that way you'll help me as soon as possible because I've got to order those like this week. Okay, Dallas Pride on the 3rd of June. That's uh, less than a month away, folks. Okay, that'll be a lot of fun. That's us out there last year. Yeah, Motley Crew. Guess what? You made it through the announcements. You made it through service. I'm sorry about the delay today. I'm sorry about being late. Um, I hope you understand. I'm still trying to catch up from Easter and, and just I'm way behind. And I promise I'm working on it. I'm trying to get there. Okay, so let us rise for our dismissal. A bishop a day keeps the devil away. You're listening to Your Path with Bishop Mark from Dallas Universal Life Church in Dallas, Texas. So, what do you like, what do you not like, what do you want to keep, what do you want to get rid of? Everything. Everything, you want to get rid of everything? No, I'm kidding. No, I see you want to keep everything. We keep everything? Yeah. Okay. That's better. See, I ain't going to go over there. got a light out over there, I see. Which one? Hello? We all have to kill a light that light on me for some reason. I didn't turn my picture no, light off. Uh -huh. Yeah, anyway, here we go. Let's make this short and sweet today, guys. It's pretty simple. Um, we, what we talk about today? What we talk about in the sermon today? We talked about heaven. What about it? And uh, just how we view it, and uh, down, you know, and how we should, and how the devil can switch. Mm. Basically, how you feel about, you know, uh, whether if you're going to be in the here and now. Mm -hmm. Or thinking about you know, the hereafter. The hereafter, mm -hmm. right? And so, like, are you going to burn in hell? Are we, are we going to burn in hell? So I'm not. It depends on if, if you get into it. You like, you know. Mm -hmm. I think people's hardest concept is that they can't see it, so they don't think it's real. Well, that's the whole idea of faith, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't see God. We don't. We we have never seen Jesus Christ in the flesh, have we? No. Nope. Yet we believe in Him. We believe in God. Yeah. I mean, I think logically we have to believe in something. Right. It's, it's greater than ourselves that built this this beautiful universe we've got. Yeah. Put these laws into effect that we abide by every 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 day. Yeah. Um. What about that though? Do you believe in hell? I mean. That's exactly what I was going to say. Remember that, remember that balance. The, the universe will always be balanced out, right? So if, you, if you've got good, you've got evil. You can't have one without the other. Okay? If you've got uh, love, you've got hate. You can't have one without the other. And you can't appreciate love without knowing hate. Right? So if you've got heaven, there's something else over here. It's hell. Whatever you, whatever you want to call it. 
I, I think to sum it up, it, it, if you listen to those last few words I said uh, in, in the sermon today, of if you can believe and imagine and, and know and trust that you will spend eternity with the one who loves you the most, who has done the most for you, who created you, who's been there always for you, with that that person, that, that being, if you can spend eternity with that person, that's what heaven is. And if you can't long for that, if you can't be anticipating that, then something's wrong with you. I mean, that's an amazing, it's, it's hard, you're right, Brian, it's hard to not see it and not know for sure. None of us know for sure what happens when we take our last breath on this earth. None of us know for sure. Hmm? And they have, they, you know, when they come back, you know, was it just a dream? You know, who knows? Uh, I, I have my faith is 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 strong in that in that way because I, I, I well, luckily I do have a connection that we've talked about before with with the people who have passed on, which is wonderful to have. Scary as hell sometimes, but wonderful to have. But it still doesn't make. I still have my doubts. I'm human also. I still doubt. I still am scared of that. I'm still very scared of death. If you being a person who's who teaches every Sunday about heaven and God and, and how He loves us and all these wonderful things, I still have my doubts. I'm human. I, th I think it's it's normal to. If you don't, something's wrong with you. Yeah. So yeah, it, as I get older, I think about those things. Mm -hmm. you know, that Jesus had doubts, and probably. Oh sure. Uh, he probably even had doubts in himself about you know, is this really the real thing? Like, am I really? What was the last thing he said? What was the last thing? He said? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Just... Why have you left me? Yeah. God didn't leave him. He was just waiting for him. Just like he's waiting for us, mm -hmm. but it's scary because we don't know what that what that next step is. We don't know where we go. Is it all over? Maybe. Is it? It could be. Is, is our that's that energy that's in us? Is our soul? Does it just go back to the universe and become energy someplace else? Yeah. I don't know. I don't believe that. I, I think that, that there's more. Um, yeah, and, and life and everything like that. When you live your life, there's always a reason for everything. Right. You're just right. it's coincidence, right? So, I talk so, about that all the time. I mean, like, our lives in general, if that's like basically how our lives are on this earth, our lives in general are for a reason and a purpose, right? Because that doesn't mean like if everything in our lives is a, has a reason for it, then why would there not be a reason for our lives to be? It goes to the age-old question of, of why are we here? What is our, what is our, what, why were we put here? What is our, why are we, why did God create us and, and give us life and give us free will and give us the choices we have to make? Why? And I think they, you're right, the only logical answer, to come to, to go to heaven. the only logical answer is there's another step. Yeah. And you talk about heaven. I mean, look, I, here in my, my, in my personal beliefs, we are all here to learn. I, I think this is a big college, a big university. Our life is a big university. Because the day you stop learning, I believe, is the day you die. Okay? Why do we all have to learn these certain things? If you notice in life, we all have to learn certain things, you know, about life, about you know, about people, about you know, tr truth and honesty, and, and all. We have to learn those things through life, and, 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 and we do. And I believe that we all have to learn those same things because we have to use those skills that we learn here in our next phase of our journey. Yeah. You know, heaven may not be, you know, rolling hills and green pastures and places just to relax and rest. It may be the next step, maybe the next mountain up, moving up to the next level and, and having to battle through and learn some more. I don't know. I think, like, uh, the whole, I mean, we still probably will be learning after. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, learning a whole lot more about, you know, what, well, first of all, what's like after death, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the soul will probably continue to keep learning without a brain. But yeah, a brain, yeah, well, a brain, a brain, a brain, a brain, a brain is a part of what we need to learn here on earth, mm -hmm. right? The soul, the soul takes in most of what that learning is and, and puts out, you know. So I'm it. pretty sure it has no brain. It takes some of it. Yeah. It the brain I mean, with it. Everything in your body can be replaced except for the brain. That's the only thing you can do. So far. Exactly. So far. Who knows what they have in the future, right? Yeah, look at what it's Look at old Frankenstein, right? Yeah. Brain, tra brain transplants. <laughs> it's gonna be a, it'd be an interesting thing, wouldn't it? It would be interesting, but it would it would change. In, in your, oh yeah. Who you are. Because that soul is what makes you who you are, not yeah. the brain. Yeah. For example, that AI app he showed me, mm -hmm. that thing is smart. Yeah. I, I had another one we did. How, how would you never think that just 
because we don't know so much about the brain. There's so That's much what you just said. So what if it's our soul that kind of like, it, when it comes into us, it kind of clicks on the brain. Or yeah, turns exactly. On, it turns it on. Okay. One thing we haven't been able to do is reanimate. So when we die, we can keep a body alive. We can keep the brain alive. We can keep all of that alive. What? But we can't put a soul back into it. Right. That's what God does. We can't do that. Yeah. And there's a reason for that. Fifteen little things. But you know, the brain is the most misunderstood part of the body that we have. The brain is. Well, besides the soul. I mean, that's something I guess modern medicine really doesn't, you know, go into because, you know, there's nothing you, know, nothing you can see with it, right? You can't touch it, you can't feel it, it's not, you know. But the brain is something we don't, we don't understand it. You know, it's a lot that we have to, to learn about it. And I think that, you know, even, even they found later in, in, you know, when they do transplants, like uh, liver transplants or heart transplants, whatever, like, the, the, even the cells of that part of the body, that organ, retains memories of, of things. Like, so its food tastes will change when they have a, a transplant, and it'll match the food tra the place, uh, taste of their transplant, of the person who gave them the transplant. They'll have memories of, of things that may have been memories of the... So it tells you, it's not all up here. It's, our entire body is working together in this, and we don't understand all that. We don't. But it's amazing, and, and it's amazing to think that how that works. Even though we're dust, this is all dust. This is what's amazing about God. He creates this beautiful machine in us, right? This creation, this gorgeous, wonderful working machine, and it's just dust. Because what's important is what's inside there. Spirit, that, that spirit, soul. that soul, that energy. Yeah. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Period. That's the mm -hmm. law that God made in this universe. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Okay. It just recycles. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. The universe is all about, we talk about life and death, right? The universe is always about, also about, it's very chaotic. It's, it's never still. It's always moving. It's always changing, which is why when we become too complacent and too sitting down and doing the same thing over and over again, that's not what we're supposed to be. It's not what we're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be uneasy. You're supposed to be uh, nervous. You're supposed to, because you're uh, it's always changing and you don't know what the next step is. You're, it's the unknown. It's moving into that. Because the universe <coughs> is always changing. And if you're not changing with it, you're going against it. You don't want to do that. Because that makes it, you going against the universe is not you're not going to win. So think about the universe. We have you, you have these supernovas. And you have this beautiful sun that burned for millions of years, billions of years, and all of a sudden it implodes on itself. Poof. Mm -hmm. And from that supernova comes all of this new life, right? It just expands out, and all this energy goes out in different places and becomes new galaxies and new planets and new suns. And from from, from that death. Nebula, became this new life. Yeah. I think that's if you look at that that way and kind of try and put that into your own perspective a little bit. A it could be a, it could be a a, 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 a a proof of of reincarnation. It could be, or it could be just God saying, "Look, you are not done here. You're 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 going to go on. You're going to continue to live in one way or another after this because that son that died is now alive everywhere else." The sun, S-O-N or S-U-N, you want to call it. You think about it that way. Mm -hmm. Jesus was the son of God. I, I like to do that. Sun and sun. There was, there's a, I watched a video. Somebody tried to show me a video on YouTube one time. They talked about the uh, Jesus Christ and how that story has been repeated in many different cultures. It was the same kind of thing. The, the, the crucifixion, the, the persecution. The God rises in three days. And he was the son of God. Ra. Sun, S-U-N, the sun. Right? Sun, God. All those things trying to connect it together and say it's all fake. Right? All that did for me was tell me that it was more real. You know, who's to say that? If, do you really think that Jesus Christ would have only come to the, to the Israelites? No. Nope. Only? No. Nope. Come on. He's here as, he, we're all his creation. Right. So why couldn't it be that he came at different times and different you know, to different parts of the world here and th in different ways? But still, it's the same kind of story, right? I think that's, that's something we, we forget. You know, first of all, time is not linear. Time is, 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 is like this, it's an eighth, it's like the infinity, like the, the, the infinity symbol, it's, it's the eighth, right? Because it, it goes away. We don't understand that. Our brains can't comprehend that. It doesn't make sense to us, right? And if you try and do it, you're going to go insane. I, I guarantee it. It's not linear. It, it's, it's like this, okay? So if there's times when it crosses, it crosses yeah. other times, right? And it's going around. So those times when Jesus was here, he could have been somewhere else. Jesus could have been at a million places at one time. Those stories have just been changed. They're just... They're, they're similar, so similar that I think that they're all, they are all a coming of Jesus Christ, a coming of a Savior, somebody coming to teach us, look, you're loved, and you just have to do the right thing here and love each other, and you'll be fine. I think it's all the same thing. That's why I think that all paths lead to God. That's why I'm so strong about that, that look, 
if you look at the major religions out there, they're all teaching us the same thing, especially Christianity especially. Look what he says. Love one another as I have loved you. It's the only commandment he gave us. Love one another as I have loved you. He's not so much that four-letter word love. If you can do that, if you can love each other unconditionally the way that he loves us, everything else you do will be right. It's that simple and that difficult. Life can be just summed up that way. You can think of it that way. But you know what? How hard is that to do? How hard is it to love everybody? That's what he commanded us to do. That was his one commandment that Jesus Christ gave us. He said, everything else, forget it. That's, all, that's old stuff. This is the new covenant. I'm dying for you so that you can have life. And all I'm asking you to do is to love one another. Jeez, how hard? I mean, come on. It's hard for them. It's them unlovable. But it's, still, it's hard for all of us. It's, there are people in this world that are unlovable. I know that. There are people in this world that are unlikable. I don't have to like everybody. I don't have to like what they do. But I do have to love them. Yeah. And that's where a lot of people have a problem with, with the things that I do in my life. And, you know, I probably do go overboard and put myself more at risk because of that. Hallelujah. But you know what? I do it because I'm trying to love everybody the way he loved us. And he laid down his life for us. So I will lay down my life for any of you. I will. And that's just that's what he told us to do. And it's not because I want to go to heaven. That's not the whole point about no. that. The point is I'm doing it because I love you. Period. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I love you too. I'm, I'm glad you do. Hopefully we all love each other. Except you're, you're, you're with tears in my eyes. Hopefully we all love each other. Oh. Because that's, that's the one commandment he gave us. That's the one thing I've been teaching all these years that I've been teaching here up here. Is it's just L-O-V-E. I'm telling you, the hippies had it right. Back in the 70s, oh, yeah. you know, peace, love, <laughs> love, and they had, they had the flower out, love, love. That's okay. They're right. Mm -hmm. They're right. Forget all the bullshit. Forget all the, the rules. Forget all the commandments and all that crap. Do this. Love one another as I have loved you, and you're fine. Everything else falls into place because you're already you're obeying all those rules. You're obeying. Those rules are put there to teach you how to love. The, the actual final thing is that love, not the commandments. They're not up here. The commandments teach you, they're the steps to get you to love everybody the way he loved us. So if you can do that, that pinnacle up there, wow, you're there. You're there. And it's just not the kind of love, it's not just romantic love, it's about love of your neighbor, love of yeah. your friend, love of your brother and sister. So, heaven is our, it is our goal. It's where we want to go, it's where we've been promised. It's our, it's our, what we're striving for, hoping for. Don't forget, stay in the here and now. It's, I don't say not, not to think about the here and now, and then here, think about the hereafter. But you still have to stay in the here and now and remember what you're doing. Because the hereafter won't come if you're not remembering what you're doing now. Okay. What else you got? It's, it's a very complicated, it's very, very complicated in some ways and very simple in some ways. I mean, it, the, the idea of, of heaven and, and our spirits and all these wonderful things and love, it's very simple. Let's talk about it, right? But to comprehend all that and put it all together is, is, is huge. It's beyond our own imagination. It's beyond our own thought process. That's why I think like, this is all like a square one type of, like, this is where we start. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Right? And mm -hmm. there, then there's other, there, we, we are given such a small brain capacity and such a small uh, know-how and, and given limited resources in a certain area because we can't comprehend right. those type of things after after that. Well, God created us that way. And once, when it's your time is when you mm -hmm. understand all those things. And that's why a lot of people who, who are, you know, what do they die? And they just mm -hmm. die, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, they go because they say of old age. Old age, right. Like, mm -hmm. They're ready and they already know a whole lot about what's going to go on. And then this life is over, so heaven's going to be forever. If you, you watch if you watch people die that are older like that, that have been here and, been, and, and who are ready to go, are, you can look in their eyes and know that they are where they understand they're not scared they see it they are sure where they're they're, they're, they're footing is sure they know that their next step is going to be glorious mm. it's amazing to see that that calm in them I, did. You, I know you did. I, did I know you did to see that calm in them and see them know mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and with no uncertainty at all in their minds that what they're looking to go to is going to be amazing and they're completely comfortable with that some seem to just tell them like everything's <clears throat> gonna be okay and that it's a, it's a, it's a quite okay process to be. It's a DMT. <laughs> DMT is a drug, is a, is a natural chemical in your body that um, when you have severe stress 
quote, when you are about to die, this, body, this, this chemical, this hormone, whatever it is, the chemical is released into your, into your bloodstream, into your body. And I know that people have, have created it here as well. They've, they've brought it out. It's a natural substance, so they, mm -hmm. they pulled it out, and they're using it as a kind of hallucinogenic or a, a way to maybe connect to um, some things in their lives or find out some reasoning in their lives or whatever else they're using it for. Uh, hopefully not too many bad things. Hopefully they're using it for the better, the good, rather than the worse, right? But anyway, DMT is it's that it's that thing that helps to remain your your, your body to remain calm and know that look, you're moving on to something good here. You don't need to panic. Your body's always going to fight death. Your body will always fight death. It will never just give up. It's it's death is not pretty. No matter what time how you look at it, whether it's in a hospital, in a car wreck, it, death is not pretty. It fights. Your body will. It's it's taught to do that. It's taught to fight, and it's not pretty. But the soul may not be so. Mm -hmm. And that time might be ready to go. It might be knowing that, that that's where that DMT is released to let everything just kind of go, okay, go. He's waiting for you. Yeah. Talk about, there, there's a, just very quickly, there was a, a, a sermon I did about, and I did a, a story about this guy who was talking, there was a, he wanted to go see this, this guest preacher, right? And the guest preacher was talking about the end of times and, and the, the, you know, and everything ended in, and, and talking about heaven and going to that place. And the guy wrote him a letter and said, I'm too, too ill to come and talk and to listen to you, you know, just preach. But I have, I really wanted to come and, and, and hear your story about heaven and the end of times and, 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 and the afterlife because I have a great stake in that, in that place you're talking about. He said, all my life I have sent building materials and, and, and paint and concrete and the roofing. All my life I've sent it. He said, it was given to me. I didn't have to pay anything for it. That, that land was given to me, but I built, I've sent all my life, I sent all these things to it to build my, my new home. And he said, I'm almost ready to go. He said, I do have to cross that abyss. I have to go through that one valley by myself, or at least with nobody, nobody from here, with God, with mm -hmm. God, because he's waiting for us there. But I still take those first steps and go out and be in through that abyss to get to my new home. But I know it's there waiting for me. I know I built it. I know that it was given to me freely. Although it was free, it wasn't cheap because the only way I have that new home is because of the death of Christ. It's the only way I got it. So it was given to me freely, but the cost of it was very expensive. Mm. It's a very interesting story. I'm not, I'm not doing it justice the way I'm saying it, but it's, it's a beautiful story. So remember that yeah, we talk about heaven and we talk about afterlife, we talk about things like that, but those were not free. Those were, we, those were paid for by somebody else. And we ought to be very eternally, always, completely, totally grateful for that. If we don't show that, we should. Just remember, don't waste your damn life. I, I get so angry. I, I was angry myself for wasting times in my life. Because you're just, mm -hmm. you're slapping God in the face, in my opinion. He gave you these wonderful talents. He gave you this wonderful, he gave you life to begin with. To be here and experience this thing and have love and hope and joy. And gave you this beautiful planet that gave you all the resources you possibly need to live. Mm -hmm. And what do we do? We screw it up. We have screwed it up. We have screwed it up. We, we, we screwed the planet. We've, we've screwed ourselves, we've, we, we, we're la lackadaisical, we, we sit and get complacent, and we don't use the talents he's given us because we, we're just bored, we don't, we don't want to. We, it's, uh, you're wasting what God gave you, why? He gave you beautiful talents, use them, share them with the world, that's the whole, that's the whole idea of these, these talents. Not everybody has the same talent for a reason, so we can share them with each other. That's what life's about. Share, love, teach. Learn. Okay? Don't forget to take that love that God's given you, because He obviously gave it to all of us, because He gave you life. Don't forget to accept that love, and when you accept that love, you love yourself. At that point, you learn, somebody loves me. Somebody really big out there loves me. If they can love me, I can love myself, and if I can love myself, then I can give my love to everybody else. And only then can you do that. If you can't accept that love from God and love yourself, you have nothing to give to anybody else who has your love. You have to love yourself first. Period. I'm so tired of hearing people say, oh, I love him. Oh, I love her. Oh, I'm in love. You, you hate yourself. You're so depressed that you can't get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> how can you, if I don't have a dollar in my pocket, how can I give you a dollar? I have to have love in my soul, in my heart, to give that love to you. Right? And the only way to get that is accept that love from God that he's given you. And understand that he loves us. That's why he created us. If he didn't, he wouldn't have given us free will to, to love him back. He would just say, your robots love me. Right? What good would that be? Love, 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 love. It always comes down to love. Am I right, Don? Yep. All right. Anything else? Let's circle up and pray our way out of here. This subject could go on and on and on. I'm very adamant about it because it is the basis of everything that I teach. It is.
So please understand, it's very simple, mm-hmm. but very difficult. So remember that. Okay. <laughs> Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to come together today and praise your name as we sure rightfully should, uh, so freely and so able to just speak our minds without any threat of uh, persecution. Um, Lord, help us to understand your love. Help us to accept your love so that we may freely give it to all who we encounter, to everyone around us, so we can abide by your commandment to love one another as you have loved us, although we can never possibly do it perfectly, we will strive to do so and follow in your footsteps as much as possible. Lord, watch over us the next week, watch over our families, help us prepare for this wonderful time coming of our seventh anniversary and of pride coming up. Help us to make it something special. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, help me break it down real quick and then we can get out of here and y'all can do whatever you want to do.